wow, this car's amazing. <laughs> this isn't even me on script, I'm actually just dead. Mura, Kuntash, Diablo, Murcielago and Aventador. These names are synonymous with what it is to be a supercar. Lamborghini powerhouses, big V12, brutish cars that bomb down the roads making screaming sounds, but not great to drive. They've always had a set of challenges that makes them a bit compromised, a bit flawed. And especially with tightening emissions and tightening regulations, things are changing up for Lamborghini. And speaking of challenges, the Rualto has its fair share of what I like to call daddy issues. It's the successor to the famous Aventador, a car that launched in 2012 and ceased production in 2022. And despite all of the Aventador's praises, it was far from perfect. The genesis of the Aventador line was the LP700-4. It featured a 6.5 litre V12 engine delivering 700 horsepower and the innovative ISR gearbox. We'll get back to that in a second. The grandfather of the Aventador set unbelievable standards as to what it is to be a supercar. Next came the Aventador SV, a lighter, faster, more agile version of the Aventador. It boasted a new aerodynamic concept that displayed Lamborghini's dedication to the pursuit of performance without compromise. This was then followed by the Aventador S, which enhanced the original's capabilities with advanced technologies such as four-wheel steering. Then came the Aventador SVJ. It took the platform to its limits with a focus on aerodynamic superiority, a lightweight design, and a record-breaking Nürburgring lap time. However, the Aventador was not without its faults. Despite several updates throughout its time, the ISR gearbox remained. What was once innovative and technically advanced, it became the Aventador's Achilles heel. The ISR robotized manual gearbox made it a bit unpredictable to drive. Sometimes the shifts would arrive late, and other times it would be like a sledgehammer hitting you in the back of your seat and launching you to the moon. Yet, despite its quirks, you can't help but love it. The howling V12 soundtrack behind you provides a symphony like no other, and the inboard F1 suspension make driving it an exhilarating experience. Some might say it's unmatched by anything other than intercourse. In fact, I have it on good authority that Lamborghini don't actually measure 0 to 60. They measure 0 to 69. The Aventador isn't an easy car to drive. On these country roads, you can see by how much we're shaking, how firm the ride is. Also, you have restricted visibility and the car weighing 1,580 uh, kilograms dry makes it a, a challenge to navigate on British country roads. But when you do get on it in the Aventador, it is an experience. But to get on it in an Aventador, you have to have your brain tuned in, your heart racing and your fear of God up high. It's exciting to drive, but not in exciting, amazing way, in exciting, I'm going to wet myself kind of way. Enter the Rualto, a 6.5 naturally aspirated V12 that revolutionizes what Lamborghini does and what Lamborghini will stand for going forward. This car has a top speed of 217 miles an hour and acceleration faster than you can say Tesla Model S performance. Plaid plus, I don't know, 2.5 seconds, zero to 60. This car is insane to drive. The steering is sharper thanks to a new steering ratio. It makes the car feel more akin to that of a Ferrari. I've said this before. This exact car that we're in right now weighs 1,756 kilograms dry. That's about 200 kg heavier than what we had in the Aventador. With the Rualto, it's learned from its father's mistakes. That jarring ISR gearbox replaced by an eight-speed dual-clutch transmission. And while the V12 still howls, it's been rotated 180 degrees and coupled with an electric motor on the rear. The front is still powered, but this time by two independent electric motors. Speaking of electric motors, the electric motors in this car are literally here just to pay second fiddle to the V12 engine. What they do, instead of providing you with ultimate efficiency, is to torque fill and provide you that extra boost when you're driving at speeds that should be illegal. There's no drive line to the front wheels. That is all electrically operated now with two independent electric motors, allowing for virtual torque vectoring. And if you have a sticky situation, you can pull yourself out of it. If you need to reverse, that's all handled by the electric motors, the front ones. But if you really, really are stuck, the back electric motor will kick in. And although people hate on the electric powertrain of this car, something I love is that when I get home, bliss. I won't wake up the neighbors, I won't wake up my son. And also, it makes it a lot cooler when I do start it up. The exterior is unmistakably Lamborghini. I mean, just look at it. Like, 
The first time I saw this, I wasn't actually sure about the car because in pictures, you tend to not be able to get a sense of scale and a sense of design. I mean, these massive vents, I could fit my son in there if I wanted to. I'm not going to, but these vents and the massive tires, hulking great diffuser on the rear, they all hint to the power of the V12 nestled inside the car. And speaking of V12, if you come over here, gone is the glass cover and gone is the carbon cover of the SVJ. We now have a fully exposed V12 engine. Um, I would touch it, but I can already feel the heat radiating from it. This design gives me something out of a Steven Spielberg movie like I don't know, I was going to say Wally, but that's not even Steven Spielberg. It just looks great. The result, the Rivolta doesn't just perform, it captivates. Opening the doors is an event. The design is sleeker, sexier and smoother, yet every bit as Lamborghini as the cars before it. Tech-wise, Lamborghini has made massive leaps and bounds to improve the infotainment. The infotainment now is akin to something like an iPhone with drag and drop widgets that you can slide to the screen next to you or the screen in front of you. I don't know why, it just looks cool. Also, the design of the interior has been completely revamped for the Rivelto. We now have this sleek design that offers more space and more headroom for the driver. And you also have this futuristic ventilation system that looks like something out of a spaceship. Honestly, compared to the Aventador, this is perfection. It provides you with a ride quality that reminds you of a luxury vehicle whilst maintaining its sportiness. If you flick the car into Corsa mode, the car dials down or dials up. Stiffening the suspension, making the steering a bit heavier <laughs> and making the experience a bit more emotional. Overtakes can be done at the blink of an eye. Wow, this car is amazing. <laughs> I've driven the Aventador platform over thousands of miles. 11,000 in this example. This is my Aventador SVJ. I've had it for around three years now and I've loved every single mile that I've put on the car. It's a car that is unrivaled in its passion and its beauty and its emotion. It's a poster car, something that kids see and feel excited about, something that grown men see and feel excited about. It's amazing. But now Lamborghini has mixed impractical beauty with practical usability, providing the perfect platform that you can daily drive or take to the track days on the weekend. It really is a new age in the era of Lamborghini automobiles. Comparing this car to the Aventador, let me go off script for a second. Let me actually just speak to you like, you're just regular people, which you are. This car is leaps and bounds better than any Lamborghini that's ever come before it. I would comfortably say, as someone who's hold, owned Hurricanes, as someone who's hold, owned Aventadors, I've driven Urises, whatever. This is the best ever driving Lamborghini I've experienced in terms of all around perfection. It's not too firm and it's not too loose, but it's also the most thrilling to drive just because of those electric motors coupled with the V12. I mean, it sounds incredible. Even with the massive back box that this car has on the rear, it still provides a soundtrack that is just so reminiscent of what we're gonna miss, what's gonna change, and what's gonna be victim to legislation and to governments and to politics. This is the last of a generation. This is likely the last time we will see a V12 in a Lamborghini in the Rivelto. They've given the V12 engine at least another 10 years. At least another 10 years of loud acceleration, high-pitched screaming, bangs on shifts, emotion, drive and passion. This is something that's uncomparable to anything else. And I just have to commend them for it because without experiences like this, what are kids gonna have to hang on their wall? Is it gonna be Teslas? Is it gonna be electric cars? Is it gonna be Porsche Taycans? This will change what kids will say is their dream car or something that they wish they could have when they're older. The Rivelto, for me, should have been named the Lamborghini Perfetto. So what do I think of the Rivelto? Well, if you're lucky enough to buy one, I'll say you definitely, definitely need to get yourself in the line. Unfortunately, they're sold out till 2026, and that should let you know how good and how uncompromised this car is. It has a difficult lineage. The Diablo, the Murcielago, the Aventador, all cars that came with their own individual issues. This seems to have solved all of them, and I can't wait to see what it's like going forwards with the S, SV and SDJ model, but for now, the Rivelto is the best V12 Lamborghini of all time and the best supercar you can buy today.